The last few days of Filipino summer are coming before we hit the rainy season, which makes everyone really sad. So I thought it'd be really cool to do a couple of barbecue episodes. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make four of my essential Filipino barbecue recipes that I know you're gonna love. So this is a mixed bag of recipes that I wanted to do today. The first one being the standard barbecue on a stick with some pork tenderloin. The second dish we're gonna show you is a really thick cut pork belly that we're gonna grill nicely after a very simple marinade. The third one is a pork sisig hailing from Pampanga. And then finally, after all that pork, yes, we also do some chicken, but I don't necessarily find our chicken barbecue very interesting, but I love our fish barbecue. And one of the most accessible ones and the easiest ones to do is bungos. Really simple fish, nice and fatty, carries a lot of flavor, so perfect for our grill. Pork barbecue can be done in so many different ways and you can use so many different types of cuts. But honestly, if you want something really nice and tender, go for pork tenderloin. If you want some fatty pieces, you can use some pork belly and maybe some casim and stuff or some pork uh, legs. But do remember that at the end of the day, it'll be slightly chewier, but really it's up to you. For our marinade, you're gonna need some ketchup, some soy sauce, some vinegar, some sugar, lots of garlic, and you really want this to be sweet, so really add as much sugar as you want. If you have a tougher cut of meat, just marinate that overnight. It does denaturize a little bit of the meat and the protein, that's why I like using some pork tenderloin. Next, we're gonna make like a moisture keeping dip with tons of vinegar, some chopped red onions, some garlic, some pepper, a little bit of salt, and lots of sugar. You can never have too much vinegar. We're also gonna be using the marinade as a basting liquid right at the end to caramelize those sugars more. Some chilies to spice things up. Just ignore the whistling in the back. We have a pressure cooker going. For our liempo, really simple. You want to get a nice thick cut of pork belly. The fattier, the better. You really want that to get crispy and smoky on the grill. For a little marinade, we're going to leave it for just about 30 minutes to an hour max. Here, we're going to be using some garlic, some ginger, lemongrass, calamansi, and that mixed with any kind of soda you have. It could be Sprite, it could be Coke, it could be ginger beer. That's all we had today and a little bit of soy sauce just to season it. For our pork sisig, we're gonna to try to do something nice and traditional, just make it really smoky and tasty. So for that to happen, you just take a mascara, so a pork face. We got about half a face here. Uh, we're then gonna scrub that with some rock salt to really clean it and then run it under some water. Now we really need to boil this until it gets not like crazy pressure cooker tender, but just like nice and kind of like chewy. You still want your seasick to have kind of like a pop of cartilage here, some melted and crispy fat there, and pieces of pork in it as well. So we're gonna boil this in some water that's just seasoned with some salt, some pepper, some ginger, some bay leaves, and some vinegar to give us a nice clean taste. After being boiled for a while, we can go ahead and cut that in four and place that on our grill. Next, we will be doing a grilled bungos. For this, we are just gonna need some butter, lemons, and to base, a mix of soy sauce and chicken oil. We're grilling all of this on the new master built gravity. I think it's a 1050 series. Now, I hate cooking on gas grills and I love cooking on live wood and charcoal. The issue most of the time is you can't really control the temperature much of charcoal. And I, I have a charcoal grill here. It's just 
very tedious. You always have to fan it, always have to control the temperature. And for the longest time, I also wanted to get a smoker, but I didn't want to have a smoker and then a charcoal grill. I wanted those two in one. And that's where this beautiful beast of a machine comes into play. It does both. It smokes, but you can also grill. But the best part about it is it does have an electric socket, not to heat everything up, but to control a fan. And that technology is what actually just makes and controls your embers of your charcoals. So you fill this tower behind me with some charcoal. You light a paper underneath it, so very natural. That starts taking a blaze. Then through the electrical panel, you kind of decide how strong you want that input of air and fan to be, and that will bring your grill up to the temperature you want. So whether you're smoking or grilling, you can do that. Today we're bringing it up to 500 Fahrenheit, and it only took 10 minutes to get to that temperature. It's finally the temperature, and you can see here, everything is beautiful cast iron, so you're gonna get a beautiful sear. And then if you look inside, I only see kind of like that charcoal dust because the fire is here, the heat is here, but it brings all that heat and that flame to this side without actually having a mess underneath the grill, which is pretty special. Put a bit of oil on our cast iron and then we're good to go and to grill. Ooh, that sound. I also want to start cooking um, our pork barbecue, so I'm going to put that on the top grill and let that smoke and get the temperature before finishing off. I do it because I don't want the sugars in the marinade to burn too quickly. And then finally, that pork face right at the top just to start getting it smoky. I'm going to close it just to really drive that smoke and really imbibe that flavor all over the pork and then from time to time I'll open it, but I don't need to open it to circulate air because there is a bottom fan. To that, we're gonna use a very simple mix of chicken oil and soy sauce. Okay, now that we've everything kind of cooking at different times, we can go ahead and add our bungos. I'm gonna add it right in the middle as well. I'm gonna move all my pork on this side. There's no such thing as separating things for hygiene when you're making Filipino barbecue. Let's give it a taste. You can then dip this in like a vinegar soy sauce dip or even just some salt honestly it's already so tender so flavorful and so smoky i saw this the other day in the instagram account of a food stylist a very talented food stylist and photographer in australia called luisa brimble where i saw her cooking some filipino pork barbecue and dipping the pork in this vinegar and onion mixture and i reached out to ask what was in it and so I put those ingredients together and the plan here is to dip the pork barbecue while it's cooking inside here to keep it moist. There's a thing in Argentina called salmuera, which is basically water and salt and then they put that on slow cooking meats to keep them really moist during a long cooking process. So I feel like this is almost similar except it's acidic because we're Filipino and we love acid. So I know this is super hot, but it just looks so delicious if Singapore has satay, the Filipino has pork barbecue. Meaty, juicy, nice and sweet and tangy. I am a hot, smoky mess. It's 6 p.m., so we're starting to lose light. Um, so we'll do this really quickly. Some salt on our bungos. 
some crunchy garlic. Look at that, moist. That's why I love bungos, especially the belly part. It stays so beautifully and fat. This is my favorite part. Mmm, so good. This is the ear, nice and crispy. Give it a try. Crispy and chewy, beautiful. Let's chop this all up, put that in a cast iron pan with a bit of vinegar, some salt, some pepper, some ginger, some red onions, keep it nice and simple. Oh, it's gonna taste so good. Really important when you're making seasick like this, you're not using brain, you're not using mayonnaise to make it creamy. So this process is super key. And for me, all the ingredients in there should be absolutely perfect. And so you should really get a flavorful and good tasting uh, vinegar. I'm using sukang tuba, which I think will work really well with the dish. I'm sure this is the one dish everyone's at home saying, oh, like I can almost taste it. It just looks so good and, and it's prepared step by step properly with love. Every ingredient in there is really simple, but really well made. All you need after this is a big bottle of beer, red horse, and some rice.